As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, but what if what you're looking at is not actually a picture? Because yes, these still images are just extracted frames taken from video clips. And in fact, this is one of my favorite ways of quickly grabbing shots for social media and other quick convenient purposes when you only have video clips to work with. So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple ways you can quickly turn your video clips into still images and maybe mention a couple of important points and caveats along the way. So depending on how heavy you are into video editing, there are a couple of routes you can go. In my case, as a videographer and editor, I like to use Final Cut Pro for this, so I'm going to show that first. However, if you're less privy to video editing, I'm also going to show how to do this with VLC Media Player, which is a free downloadable media player that works on any different operating system that you can install, and I'll leave a link to this in the description below. All right, so to start with Final Cut Pro, here I am, and I just have a library, a project, of course, and a couple of clips that we're going to work with to demonstrate this. Because in fact, I do a lot of concert videography, and if you're curious how I approach that, I will leave a link above in the description below that you can check out. But in many cases from these gigs, I'm also asked to deliver photos, say for social media and other purposes. So this is the way I normally go about that. So to start here, I'm just going to take one of my clips, drag it into my project right within the magnetic timeline here. And right now I'm just skimming the clip, muting the audio here so it's not distracting, and also just to avoid any copyright claims. But eventually I should come across a frame here that I want to use as a photo. And I think something here will probably be a good example of this. So I'm going to place just my marker right here. And of course, if I want to using the arrow keys in Final Cut Pro, I can get very specific with the actual frame, just sort of navigating until I find the right shot. I do think I found a good one here. And in this case, what I'm just going to do is move over to the share icon here and the save current frame option. That said, this isn't actually an option that will appear by default in the share menu for Final Cut Pro. So just to show you how you can add this quickly. So we can go up to the file menu here, go to share, and then add destination. Now in this case, I've already added it, of course. So what we can do here is just take that and remove it. This is how you would remove an option from the different destinations. So yes, we'll want to be in the share destinations tab. And once we do this, we can just click the plus symbol. We'll get a range of options. And the one we want is save current frame. I'm just going to take it and drag it somewhere in this lineup here. Let's say right there. Of course, once we've done that, we can go up to the share icon and then save the current frame. And yes, maybe for just one caveat in this process, of course, make sure when you're exporting your frames from Final Cut Pro that you are on optimized media and not proxies or any proxy preferred settings, basically to ensure that you're getting the highest quality photo that you can export from the video. And we'll actually talk about the quality of things a bit more in a second. So in this case, I'm just going to make sure that I am on optimized media. So it is using the original and highest quality media we can. Then I'm just going to go to save current frame again. Once I've done this, let's save this to just a common simple name. I don't think I need the description or the tags. You'll see it shows the resolution here that it's going to capture from this, and it shows this is also going to be a TIFF file. Now, of course, we can change this. We can change this to a bunch of different types of image formats. Now, in this case, I think a JPEG is a really safe option, though a ping or PNG file is another good option here. You can play around with different image types and formats and see what works best for you. But I will just choose JPEG here. We will keep the image to scale to preserve the aspect ratio, and we'll keep the color space the same, of course. And at this point, we will just hit next. This will allow us to pick, of course, the destination. And so we're just going to find where we want to put these files. And I'm going to locate them here. So we'll let Final Cut Pro process this, of course. And after exporting it, once we check on our photo now, we have exactly the photo that we exported, as you can see right here. But let's say you're someone that doesn't have Final Cut Pro or you're a bit less accustomed to video editing. In this case, I'll show you how to do the same exact thing with VLC Media Player. So let's take our original clip that we used in Final Cut Pro. And in this case, I'm just going to make sure that we open it with VLC Media Player, of course, once you've installed it. And from here, of course, I can do very similar things with VLC Media Player. I can sort of step along the video if I need to, to find the right frame. And again, now in VLC Media Player, once we found the part of the video or frame that we're looking for, which as you can see, we've done right here, before we even grab this as a photo, we might wanna check a couple of settings. So in this case, I'm going to go to VLC Media Player and Preferences here on my Mac. This will be a similar settings option on Windows and other operating systems. And I'm going to want to make sure I am in the Video tab. So you might start off with Interface, just so make sure you go over to the video tab. Once you do this, you're going to see the video snapshot section, and we're going to want to probably set a few things here. One, of course, we'll want a folder where we can export these photos. So in this case, it doesn't have to be anything particularly special. I'm just going to choose the desktop. It will by default add a prefix, which I think is okay in this case, though you may want to set it to something else that you prefer. And you can also choose for VLC to be able to do sequential numbering if you want it to do that, rather than marking the photos by timestamp when you export them. And again, you will have the option to choose the format that you use. So in this case, we have ping, JPEG, and TIFF. I'm going to use a JPEG here as well. And then I'm going to click save. Now at this point, we should be ready to export this as a photo. So in this case, we'll go over to the video option on the main menu and just click snapshot. 
And as you can see, VLC shows you that it's taken the frame and made a snapshot out of it. And as you can see right here, just looking at the contents of my desktop, VLC made the snapshot using the prefix we specified and the timestamp, the format, everything that we selected beforehand. Now, a couple of key things you're also going to want to keep in mind here. Of course, when you're taking a still photo from a video, the resolution of that photo is going to be essentially the maximum resolution of the video. So in this case, that means a still from a 4K video is roughly an 8 megapixel photo, a still from a 1080p video is roughly a 2 megapixel photo, so on and so forth. And yes, of course, the larger you get in resolution, say for something like 8K, the better the quality would get. So this is really something to just keep in mind in general. Also, if you're going to crop these later, mostly for the fact that you'll be working with a bit less resolution than you might typically expect, and for the fact that this is going to be a lower resolution photo compared to, say, if you took this from a camera's native stills mode versus having to actually extract this from video. Now the second piece you might want to keep in mind here actually deals with the shutter speed and motion blur as you're extracting photos from video. As you can see here just skimming across you're going to notice slight amounts of blur say in the singer's hands or the guitarist's hands as he's strumming and sort of moving around. If you've used the 180 degree rule say 24 frames per second and a 1 over 50th shutter speed as this was taken in you might notice some motion blur in different frames and you want to keep an eye out for trying to get the sharpest and most crisp frames that you can find as part of the video. That said, if you know you're going to be extracting frames from video later, or you're working with something like a 60 frames per second clip, which is typically shot with a higher shutter speed, you might have a shutter speed, say for 60 frames per second, like 1 over 125, that is able to produce a crisp enough image frame per frame so that you don't have to necessarily worry about this. Something to just keep in mind, and I do have a couple other videos around shutter speed and motion blur that I will leave up above and in the description below that you can check out if you want to learn a bit more. So of course at this point I actually have a bunch more frames I have to pick out, so I'm just going to roll through these here and we'll maybe touch base in a bit once that is done to talk about actually editing these as photos. All right, so once you've finished grabbing all of your still frames, you either are good to go or maybe you want to edit them just a little bit more. Now, in my case, I typically take these stills and bring them into Lightroom Classic just to put a little bit of polish on them to make them look more like an actual photograph that was taken. So, of course, just to quickly demonstrate this here, if we wanted to do that, I'm going to go back into the gallery view here and just remove what I have currently in Lightroom. Once I do this, I can go to import here. I can find the desired location where all of these photos are exported, and I can import all of these different stills so I can start to edit them like they were photos. So let's just go ahead and do that now. All right, now that our import is done here, we can start to edit these. So say we take just this first one as an example. If I go into the develop view, I can do just an auto exposure adjustment, and this might bring it up a little bit more than I'd like it to, so I'm going to dial back some of the highlights and whites, perhaps. I'm going to bring down the blacks a bit, I'm going to also just see if we can correct the white balance here. This room was very magenta, as you can probably tell, so being able to correct this and get it a little more spot on is helpful. Here, if I open up just some of the different presets panel here, I can start to look at what some other different presets might look like if I apply it to these photos. As I'm playing with some of the adaptive subject ones that are built into Lightroom, I think Warm Pop looks pretty good. Now in this case, we might also want to crop it so it looks like a 3 by 2 image rather than the 16 by 9 aspect ratio that you'll typically get with video in 1080p, UHD, etc. So here I can just go to the crop overlay, choose something like a 3 by 2 As you can see here, this is framed up pretty decently, I would say, maybe something like that. In this case, we can also see if we need to level this photo, see what it looks like if it makes an attempt at that, and I think that looks pretty good. And as you can see, this arm and this sleeve is a little bit blurry here, so you might want to actually just go in and actually increase the sharpening in this photo, more than we would, say, for some others. Now that's just one example, we could probably do another as well and do something similar. Here, let's say, let's take one that we want to do actually as a 2 by 3 and something that will end up in sort of a vertical aspect ratio. Again, here we can apply an auto exposure adjustment. We can do an auto white balance just to make sure this gets corrected. We could also add our warm pop to this to see if that makes a difference. I think it does. I still think it is a bit bright, so I might tone this down a little bit. Just again, bring down the blacks and the shadows here just to bring in a little more contrast. See if there's maybe any leveling that could be applied, perhaps. And in this case, if I want to change the crop orientation to go from horizontal to vertical, here I can just go into the crop overlay tool. Again, I will choose that 2x3 or 3x2, and I will just hit the X key to switch that to a vertical shot. Maybe slightly line that up a bit differently. And then there we go. 
Now, of course, I'm not going to show how you would edit every single photo here or what I did in this case, but you can take a very similar approach as I've just shown in these couple of photos, apply them across the board to the stills that you grab from your video. And with not too much more work, as you're now seeing the finished products on screen, you will have pictures that while you know you took them as stills from video, perhaps no one else might even know this. So that is a couple of ways you can take your videos and turn them into still images. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. A lot more to talk about regarding editing of videos and photos, so definitely subscribe if you want to see more of that. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.